Yeah, I'm not even going through the uh Hey guys, I were, I was already live on TikTok, so how you guys doing, man? Y'all know me, man. It's your boy Larry. This is the Dixon Way. Look above me. It's all about the A Sports Salt. Look over there too, man. I'm here. This ain't a watch party, man. This is a discuss party right now, man. Team President Travis Slink has just quit slash resigned his team president job that he just got this offseason. So he was just promoted from GM to team president. And now he just went ahead and, and up and quit. All right. Damn, bro. We put a lot of resources in making this deal that Travis led to get DeJounte Murray. Right now, we're not playing good. That's a strike against us, okay? DeJounte wanted to go somewhere where he could win. That's why Coach Pop let him go so he could go somewhere to potentially to win. Now, yeah, Travis leaving doesn't affect, you know, play on the court, but it could affect DeJounte Murray um, staying here because he's the one that pulled the deal off. Travis was the one who pulled the deal off. He's the mastermind in building this team. Now, if we don't play well, DeJounte goes into a next year without a contract, then what? Then what are we going to do? We're going to have to make the finals to keep him here. Because right now, it's a lot of turmoil. I don't know if he like the coach. You know what I'm saying? People like players. You know, players like each other when they don't play with each other. We don't know how him and Trey Young like playing with each other. Yeah, what's up, Falcon Pros? How you doing, man? Yeah, man. Hold on, hold on. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got, we got panic alert on right now, man. Straight panic alert. Yeah, for real. Like, this crazy, man. This is absolutely crazy. And, uh, you know, normally I just come on and do the watch party or something like this, but my wife sent me that text like, you know that Travis Slink just stepped down and resigned from his job? I'm like, what? And then I was like, hold on, let me see the link. But as you can see, this is reported by Asia Wojciechowski. And then Wojo put it up, it's the truth. Wojo don't pull up no bull job. Feel me? He don't. So, if Wojo put it up, then it's, it's, it's probably legit. It's probably legit. Not saying that he's always been right, but when it comes to stuff like this, man, he's pretty spot on. He's pretty freaking spot on. Hold up. Let me refresh this. All right. So, yeah. I'm so triggered, bro. I am so triggered right now. So triggered right now, man. Like this puts everything in doubt. And, and it could have been simple, like maybe Tony Wrestler was like, hey, maybe we need to go out and get another coach. And Travis was just like, you know what, man? I fired one of my best friends and Lloyd Pierce for you. If I fire Nate McMillan two years after he got us to the um Eastern Conference Finals. As a GM, I lose a lot of credit throughout the league, like respect. People might not want to deal with me. Agents might not want to deal with me. You know what I'm saying? So I got to keep these relationships clear. You never know, man. I'm all speculating right, there, right now. This is just some healthy conversation. But man, 
It don't make no sense for a grown man to quit his job right before Christmas. That's a shot at the owner. Am I wrong? Y'all out there watching, tell me. It's a team president who just became a team president, Travis Slink. Quitting his job before Christmas for, for the family. For the family. Is that not a shot? Hey, what's going on? I'm trying to see. Henry Callister. How you doing on, on TikTok? Appreciate you. Uh, that's a shot. I see you, Falcon Pros. Appreciate the follow. Kenny. Daddy Beats, what's going on? I see you. Hey, Henry, how you doing? Appreciate you coming through on TikTok. You can't see the, um, I highlighted, I highlighted, but I don't have the stream key for TikTok. So I can't highlight it. You have to be on YouTube to be able to see the highlight, but I see you on the comments. Appreciate you coming through, bro. Appreciate you. Uh, Falcon Pros. Why is that not coming up? Hold on, hold on. I got to open this other browser. Hopefully it comes up soon. All right, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right, say something else again, Falcon Pro, so I can highlight you. I see what you said. He did this at the wrong time. Uh, if you <clears throat> excuse me, if you're tired of the owner meddling, ain't no time the wrong time, dog. Like, what other reason did he have for leaving? Unless it's the owner. Uh, 49 fan, what's going on? Appreciate you coming through on TikTok. He says, with a Hawks trade calling. Uh, I don't know who going to make. I mean, Landry Fields got to make all the. I mean, he's a GM, but now he's team operations manager also. So uh, they were shopping John Collins. Maybe the owner went to um to Travis Slink and was like, why haven't you got anybody for um John Collins yet? In my opinion, it feels like the owner was probably saying, you need to get rid of uh, Nate McMillan. And Travis has already got rid of a coach two years ago. Then we went on that run, that magical run to the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, if... I don't know, bro. I I can't see uh, Travis standing for that when he helped build the um, the Golden State Warriors. He was like the lead talent evaluator on the Golden State Warriors to build their dynasty. That's why I always thought that he picked Trey. You know, I thought he picked Trey. You know, but rumors were that the owner wanted Trey instead of Luca. We'll never know unless they write a documentary about it. We'll never know. But word on the street is, is that Travis wanted Luca and the owner wanted Trey Young. So, of course, you know, you're a brand new um, GM. Of course, you're going to do what the owner says, make it happen. You know what I'm saying? But uh, now, it might have been one too many times for Travis, and he's just like, you know what, man? I can spend time with my family. I could be doing a lot of stuff instead of dealing with you, bro. Check this out. I'll hand in my res resignation. Effective immediately. Spud Webb, Dunk King. Oh, yeah, I love Spud Webb, man. Brings back memories, childhood memories. They're not even talking about ESPN. I'm like looking, trying to see if they're talking about ESPN, but they don't really care about the Hawks on ESPN. So what am I thinking? Thinking they gonna talk about it on ESPN. Come on, man. They just gave a blurb right there and then it's another one that, uh, well, let's see, let's see.
Here, son, watch Paw Patrol. There you go. All right. So who's going to replace uh, Travis? Uh, right now, Landry Fields is the GM and active um, team president of operations right now. Yeah, Falcon Pros, yeah. So, Landry Fields got the keys to the entire kingdom now. Just that quick. He went from assistant GM to GM, and now he's slash team president of basketball operations. And, land, and basically, Travis Slink has been reduced to an advisory role. That way he can still get the money. He can advise um, Landry on what moves to make, but he tired of the owner. That's literally what that is. I'm not gonna fully quit. I'm gonna demote myself to an advisory role so I can still help out my protege in Landry Fields. But uh, dealing with this owner? Nah, bro, I'm out. I got too much cachet in the league to let you try to control any moves. I did it once when I fired Lord Pierce, one of my closest friends, because you wanted him out of here. Okay, that's fine. You know, Nate McMillan got, you know, something out of the players that uh, Lloyd Pierce couldn't, the players tuned them out. Okay, fine. Now you want me to do the same thing two years later? Nah, I lose credibility, man. Can't do it. So. <sighs> so now, what this does is like, you got DeJounte Murray, who after the last game when we won, and, and a reporter asked him, are you happy about getting the win? You hit those clutch shots. Way to go, trying to give him a pat on the back. DeJounte was like, I ain't happy about that. I'm glad we got the win, but uh, we got to learn how to play better basketball. Those are words out of DeJounte Murray's mouth. DeJounte Murray left the Spurs to win, guys. He didn't come up here to play with his homie Trey Young in the offseason. No, because he liked playing with Trey Young in the offseason because both of them gym rats. He left the Spurs in excellent coaching and culture to win. That's what he did. Falcon Pro said that Jante is 100% right. Yeah, he's 100% right. You know? I mean, this crap got me. I mean, it got me straight triggered, bro. I mean, I want to bust off some curse words and all that, but I'm trying to keep it civil. <laughs> but we definitely got the uh, alert on, though. But it's definitely a triggered alert right now, man. Hold up. Let me fix this. So... Where do we go from here? On the court, we got to play better deep. Son, get away from that door, please. Thank you. We got to play better defense, and we need to move the ball. It's too many pick and roll at the top of the key. That's either with Trey or with um, DeJounte. We got to get more motion off the ball. I have seen Trey play off the ball more than I ever have in his whole career. But again, not no one pass shoot. We got to get some more motion. And defensively, you know, to quote coach, we got to play as a fist. You know what I'm saying? A fist ain't as strong as you got one finger out and you try to punch somebody. That ain't that ain't going to work. You're going to break that finger. Feel me? So playing together as a fist, I agree with um coach on that. Do I know if coach is the right dude to, to get it out of him? I don't know. 
do we are we just overrating our player? You know what I'm saying? And think we are better than what we should be? I think we had the talent to play. I just think we got to all play the right way. Uh, and that's not a shot at one player. That's not a shot at the coach. So right now, we scuffling. And uh, I said that I was going to give us about 25 games to find out what we got and stuff like that. We way past that now. <laughs> so... You got you to gotta start, you know, getting into a flow of things, you know. And uh, the, the Hawks right now, really the entire East, you got the Hawks and uh, Miami looking suspect this year. The, the Nets have finally turned it on when they put Ben Simmons at center. So he, he won't have to be responsible, you know what I'm saying, for playmaking, stuff like that. He could just do it out of the center position. That was a smart move by um, Coach Vaughn, Chop Vaughn. The Atlanta Hawks have the Chicago Bulls tonight, who are also struggling. They're 11 and 18, I think. Hold on, let's look at this. No, they're 12 and 18, excuse me. Let's uh, pull it up. Pull up the game cast so we can look this up. Get a little preview. Yeah. They 12 and 18, man. They 5 and 11 way. We have them at home. We need to win this dango game. We have a spread of 5.5 tonight. Now, if y'all sitting here and been watching these games with me, you know ain't no game that easy for the Hawks. Come on, man. Come on, man. I don't know what the cover is and stuff like that. The Hawks is uh, 67% chance of winning. Trey Young field goal percentage is steadily going up. He was like at 37% at the beginning of the season. Now all the way up to 41. So you know he's been shooting uh, roughly around 48 to 50% to boost that up that fast. So Still need to be a little bit better, you know what I'm saying, especially on three-point percentage. But uh, overall, uh, Trey is going to get out of that, in my opinion. He's definitely going to get out of this, that little mini slump that he had. TikTok warning me. I don't know why. I ain't did nothing wrong. But anyway, oh, it, it popped out and reset. Okay. Oh, man. I don't know a man who quits their job before Christmas for family reasons. That's usually after Christmas and New Year's. Normally when someone quits a job. So for him to quit just before uh, Christmas, it's really strange. Not really strange. It just screams that the owner is in the way. And I was hoping we didn't have a meddling owner. I mean, anything was better than uh, the Atlanta Spear Group who owned, uh, uh, owned the Hawks at first. But uh, Travis Slink is the best GM that this organization has ever had, period. It's not even really debatable. It's not even debatable. Really not. So um, what's going on, Chris? I see you, Jack Harlow. Yeah. Hey, you know a Knicks fan going to come in here and troll me when they finally got like an eight-game winning streak. But no, I mean, but you do bring off a um, good comment, though. Some off with this um, franchise. No, seriously. I mean, this dude is literally, do you know the Knicks would kill to have Travis Schlink come up in there and fix their team? They would kill. They would throw a parade to get Travis Schlink, which I think he may go to. To be honest, quiet as kept. He had advisory role. He can advise from his own locker room, you know what I'm saying, from his own new job. But yeah, if I was a Knicks, I would definitely go out to Travis Schlink. The only reason he wouldn't accept that, 
if it messed with his money. But yeah, it's a lot of teams that would love to have Travis Slink, the guy who built the, uh, well, he was a talent evaluator for the Warriors. He the one who made those suggestions to draft those guys, to draft Steph, to draft Draymond, to draft Clay. He did that. So, yeah. I mean, I don't really like, like if y'all can't tell, man, this is me right now. I'm real triggered, like super triggered. <laughs> Falcon Pro says, whatever coach is doing, not working needs to um, stop ASAP. Defense needs to step up. You got so many strong guys and tall guys not playing defense. Now, we're actually a short team, Falcon Pros, to be honest. Like, I mean, our starting center is 6'10". We're a small team. I mean, he's an elite rebounder, but we are technically a small team, to be honest. I mean, we got Frank the Tank, who's like 6'11", but we won't even play him. He just can't see the court. Hate to see it. <sighs> What'd you say, Jack Harlow? If you guys are uh, commenting on TikTok, I'm trying to check it and check all three streams as we're going. It's not populating if you guys are. Uh, Jack Harlow said, I'm not even trolling. As much as talent the Hawks have, they should be better. Yeah, you're right. We got a lot of talent, man. But here's another point. What are the Hawks' identity? Right now, they don't have one. Right now, they don't have one. I can even tell you what the Knicks' identity is. The Knicks right now, in this not, what, eight-game win streak, they've been the best defensive team in the league. So, yeah, they showed that, um, that stat before the game when they blew out um, Golden State last night. I was watching. I was watching. We ain't had no game, so I watch. I watch all kind of games. You feel me? Not just the Hawks. I just don't broadcast those. But uh, the Hawks don't have an identity right now. And that I put squarely on coach. Okay, you feel me. You feel me. All right, cool. Yes, I put that squarely on coach. All right, and I'll make this analogy right here. When you look at the Falcons play, what's the identity of the Falcons? Hmm. Hold on, let me put this sound in. What is the identity of the Falcons? Let me do it again. Falcon pros. I know you know the identity, but I'll tell you, it's running the ball. The Falcons identity takes the identity of the head coach who came for Tennessee, who want to establish the run, first and foremost. That is the Falcons identity. Whether you like Coach Arthur Smith or not, the Falcons play, run the ball, and play bend but don't break defense. That's their identity. I know who the Atlanta Falcons are because the coach is trying to build a culture of running the ball and playing bend but don't break defense. That's the Atlanta Falcons. Um, that's their culture. That's what they do. What do the Atlanta Hawks do? I'll sit here and wait. What do they do? I 
outside of pick and roll and stand around? What's their identity? Yeah, Falcon Pro, let me put that up. Yeah. No, not clap. Laughter. Laughter. <laughs> Choking in the fourth quarter. Now, that's kind of the, the Falcons' MO also. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, the identity of the Atlanta Hawks on how they play basketball. They don't have one. High pick and roll. Watch Trey Young do everything. That's just a player doing something. We don't have an identity yet. We don't. And that's a Hawks problem. And I do put place that on the coach. Now, did the owner say, Hey, we need to fire Nate McMillan right now. Hey, I'm glad you said that because I was about to say it. I was just about to say that. The Mavericks have the same issue. The exact same issue. The exact same issue that the Atlanta Hawks have. It's literally Luka Ball all over there in Dallas. Yep, and it's the same thing here in Atlanta. And when you break down Luka and Trey game, man, they are so similar. It's just one is eight inches taller than the other. Like, when I sit back and I look at it, and I look at the metrics and stuff like that, and I look at their game and I watch a game, with the Mavericks and I watch, you know, I watch every game with the Hawks and uh, Luke and Trey Young game are eerily similar. Eerily similar, man. Like it, yo, man, if I take Luca and curl up his hair and shrunk him, it would be Trey Young. Like, bro. Like, what the? And me personally, I want to trade. Uh, I just don't know we got the coach that can reach him. It's going to take a coach that can come in there with some rings on and be like, hey, bro, I know how to win. You don't. Because these developmental coaches like LP wasn't going to do it. Uh, Nate McMillan seemed like, you know what I'm saying, seemed like he's losing the locker room. So. Hey, a Knicks fan agreed with me. Imagine that. Imagine that. I got some new sounder guys, so I'm, I'm trying to test them out. I know you can't hear it on TikTok, guys, but uh, whenever TikTok give me my stream key, then I'll be able to, you know, stream that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man, this is real disturbing, man. Hawks just lose their team manager, excuse me, team president. He quits, resigns, whatever you want to call it, just to become an advisory role. He basically doing that so he don't leave Landry Fields high and dry, but he's sick of the owner. That's the only way I can read that, and our flagship station is not talking about it, so I had to get on here and talk about it. I had to. I had to. It was my civic duty to get on here and talk about it. Who's better, Jajante or Bogey? Come on, man. That's a that's a silly question. That's a silly question. What? 
the? What the? What kind of question is that? <laughs> of course, Dejounte Murray is better than um, Bogey. That's not even a question. Offensively and defensively, Bogey can shoot a better three pointer than him, but that's about it. Dejounte Murray is elite. He's an elite um, scorer, mid range shooter, and facilitator in his league. I'm worried now about keeping the John Tate because it was Travis Slate that orchestrated the deal. Appreciate everybody coming in, man. If y'all don't know, man, I'm your boy, Larry. This is the Dixon way all about the A sports talk, man. We're talking about Travis Slate resigning from his um, team president job. The state of the Atlanta Hawks, they in turmoil. 16 and 15 right now. 10 and 5 at home. I mean, this is supposed to be the year that we step up and try to be a top three team. And this crap happens. Right in the middle. And again, we can only speculate. We ain't in the room. We ain't in the meet rooms, all like that. But this screams of, I'm sick of this owner, putting his nose and stuff, trying to get me to do this and do that. I'm out. Deuces. We'll holler at you. I'm sick of it. As y'all see, as y'all can see, your boy triggered. And, uh, this ain't good, man. We're going to have to make a a significant run in the playoffs to keep DeJounte here. We don't have our main negotiator. And the biggest thing in this upcoming season, during this season, or before he gets the next season, is assigned to Jonte Murray to a, a max contract. That is the single most important thing in this franchise right now. Because we gave up so much to get to Jonte. There is no way we can allow him to walk out of here. And we gave up three unconditional first round picks. Not just three picks in the first round, but three unconditional picks. If we lose to Jante, Trey Young out of here. He out of here. He's out of here. He's gone. And then we wasted. Then I'll say that the trade was bad with Luke and Trey. Right now, I feel that's even. But we lose Trey Young, then what did we trade for him for? If we couldn't keep him here. That's a player that you want to keep here. Him, Luca. You want to keep those players. For their entire career. Shut up, Chris. I know. And see, this is how I know. But a system. DeJounte's better. DeJounte's better for the system. He's a better player. He's more marketable. It's, it's, it's not even a question. It's DeJounte, man. That ain't even a question. Uh, Falcon Pro says that I will put Trey to take in as a starter. Well, when, when Clint Capella's out, I would. Um, John Collins cannot play the center. We saw that. He gave up too many offensive rebounds. Um, so does a Yucca Kongu. Both of them do not box out. They don't. They just don't. They don't box out. Okay. So when you don't box out, you give up too many second chance points. That's a problem. Okay. And look at this. Look at this Knicks fan right here. Knicks fans say, Trey on to NY. What it? The Knicks would. 
they would throw a parade for Trey Young. How they be saying if Trey Young, they would throw a freaking parade for Trey Young if he came there. Because that's the type of player they love that they can take it, talk. It's just like Reggie, uh, just like Reggie Miller. They would have loved Reggie Miller in New York if he played for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. No, 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 no. But see, that's the thing. If it got to the point that Trey wanted out of here, and they said, "Okay, we'll get, we'll give y'all Bronson, and um, we'll give y'all Bronson and RJ with Trey Young." New York could do that in a heartbeat. In a pick, New York could do that in a heartbeat. And that'll probably be the best deal you get for Trey, too. Unless you just get a whole bunch of picks like Cleveland did for, uh, gave away for Donovan Mitchell. You know. Oh, man, don't, don't let the smooth taste fool you. The Knicks would love to have Trey Young, they would love to have, especially Knicks fans. You know what I'm saying? They scream F Trey Young, but that would learn, that would turn into, I love Trey Young. I promise you. No, son, don't grab that. <laughs> Look at that, man. He about to go, son, don't take down, a, uh, don't take down the phone, son. All right. Look at that. He's talking about we got the picks for him, too. It's possible. Nope. No, it's not. What? Yo, watch he go. Watch this Knicks fan go on all the Knicks blogs and be like, yo, we could get Trey Young, man. The team president who brought him there just quit. They in turmoil. Yeah, see? That's what I'm saying. I bet you if you put a poll out there, I bet you you put a poll out there in New York. They said, if we had a chance to get Trey Young, would you want him? I bet you'll be like 95% would say, hell yeah. I bet you they would. <laughs> There's a lot of people that don't like Trey Young because he don't play for their team, but they would love a player like that on their team, though. Can't get the phone right now, son. Can't get the phone right now. But yeah, uh... The Hawks just, oh my God. Yeah, guys, if you're on uh, TikTok, please hit that like, man. We need some more people up in here. Appreciate it if you did hit the like button also. I'm your host, Larry. This is the Dixon Way, all about the A Sports Talk. And right now, we're talking about these, about, I mean, these Hawks. Having a team uh, president just up and walk. Just before Christmas, talking about I need to spend more time with the family. That sound like that's cold for I'm sick of this owner getting in my business. I'm out. Deuces. Man. And that's why I'm worried about it because, you know, we're not playing well and DeJounte uh DeJounte is just, we got to resign DeJounte. And if DeJounte is going to be a free agent after next season, we have him for two years. So this year and the following year, and then he becomes a free agent. We have to give him the max. We have to. And I have no problem giving DeJounte Murray the max because he fits Trey Young. I couldn't have plucked a player outside of Kawhi in his prime. I couldn't have plucked a player out of the NBA roster to fit Trey Young better than DeJounte could. Defensively, offensively. Perfect fit. I couldn't have made a player on 2K. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, of course, Trey is a generation of tatted. Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah, I like Brunson. Brunson's scrappy, man. He played real good last night, too. Oh, yeah, he's staying here in red and white, man. I ain't playing with him. Yeah, we lost to Jante because 
I don't know, coaching or just he just see it's not working here and want to go somewhere else, then yeah, that would be disastrous, man. Then the Hawks will be back down in the cellar, but then they won't have a draft pick. Doubly worse. I think Landry Fields would be up out of here too. Like, all right, man, I'm out. I ain't sticking around here. Y'all ain't ruining my um, record. But this is his first GM job, so he ain't just going to up and leave with Travis. Travis got clout as an elite talent evaluator because most people will lose their jobs if they trade um, Luka Doncic for Trey Young. But thank goodness Trey Young was also a generational talent. You know, so it worked out for both teams. Just depends on which guy you like, to be honest. Um, Falcon Pro says, we still have AJ Buckets. Yes, sir. We still have AJ Buckets. Yes, sir. But what I'm saying is, is that AJ ain't DeJounte defensively. Not too many people are, to be honest. So you got to really look and think about like team chemistry wise. And I really think, uh, Partially this is on the players and partially this is on the coach. Uh, we don't have any identity on the Hawks. We just don't. The Falcons are losing, but I know the identity of the Falcons. We run the dang on ball. We see a man whoop a man, run game, and play bend, but don't break defense. We don't have a team-oriented identity yet. We have a player identity. And good teams have a team concept. Oh, yeah, of course I'm going live on Saturday. Come on now. We play on Saturday. I'm going live tonight with the Bulls games. But I had to get on today, you know, earlier in the day to talk about this debacle. I had to get on. Hey, son, let go of my arm, please. Lay down. I know you. I know you're sleepy. Uh, I just had to get on and talk about this, man, because it just really threw me for a loop. You know what I'm saying? It really threw me for a loop. Ah, oh, man. We just. We just can't get right. If it ain't one thing, it's another. As an Atlanta sports fan, you just got to deal with the silliness. You know, sometimes, man. Unfortunate. Jack Harlow says, let me highlight you. At least y'all not the Bulls right now. Where's my rim shot? <laughs> That's a, yeah. But uh, we better beat this team because after this, uh, we play Detroit and then we play the Lakers. All teams we should beat. And then after New Year's, we start a six-game road trip on the West Coast. So uh, that could be. And then once we come back, we face the Bucks for the last time. So that seven-game stretch, could be crucial to the entire season at Atlanta Hawks. And if the owner, like, get out of there, son. And if the owner asks Travis to fire our coach, <coughs> will we about to go on this road trip? No, son, Larry. Stop that, son. Um, if he asks Travis to fire the coach right before we go on this trip. I mean, I may post one get Ime Doka in here. I'm not even going to lie. I want Ime Doka in here. I feel like he could be the championship coach. He could be the Steve Kerr for this team. No, he didn't win it, but he went. 
And he's from Coach Pop's coaching tree. He was with the Spurs. So for me, the best coach that I ever had for the Hawks was Coach Bud. He left Atlanta because he didn't want to tank, openly tank, because our GM told him, look, we're going to put some players on this roster. But I just want you to know, we tanking this roster to try to get a talent of a Trey Young or a Luka status that we can build around. Right now, we can't build around Paul Millsap. <laughs> if you're trying to build around Paul Millsap, you're losing. You're losing in the long run. Paul Millsap, excellent player. If you're trying to build around Al Horford, I got the Al Horford jersey off. If you're trying to... Get, Al Horford was asking for the max for the Hawks before he left. If you're trying to make Al Horford the most highest paid player on your team, getting about 29, 30 million back in the day, no, you're losing. Okay, so that's why he walked. I understand why we, but in the same breath, we all, he really left because we went out to Dwight Howard and signed him before we signed, um, Al Horford. Travis didn't know that Al Horford and Dwight Howard did not like each other from the Hawks and Orlando battles. He didn't know that. So once that happened, Al was up out of here. Okay? Did I like how Al left? And him and his dad talking crap about the um, fan base? No. But now, I've gotten over it because I wouldn't be wearing his jersey if I did. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's it all depends on if Landry Fields can pull off the deal to re-sign uh, DeJounte. And you got to have Trey and DeJounte. Basically, as long as we have Trey, we need to have DeJounte. Larry, leave that alone. Come on. As long as, it, as, long as we have Trey, we need to have DeJounte. That one-two punch, we do not need to lose. Plain and simple. Falcon Pro says, hold on, let me, let me bring it up, Falcon Pro. For some reason, oh, there you go. At this point, I say lose all these games and get the second round. We can't. Oh, you're talking about football. Uh, I think the only way, I think the highest we can go is third for the Falcons. I would, you know what? I'm never going to say that I want them to outright tank. I want to win. You know what I'm saying? But we could improve our draft status by losing. I'm not going to be mad. I only pick us having like four wins and maybe two possible wins. So we right there where I thought it was. It just sucks watching it, you know. <laughs> it just sucks watching it. I think I'm about to get off, man. I ran it long enough. I appreciate y'all getting on here. Holla at your boy. Man, this is crazy, man. <laughs> and, and, and the flagship radio station wasn't even talking about it. They talking about grandmas, about the shoot agents because the guy Randy was going um, in in the draft and different agents would come up to his grandmother's house unannounced. You don't do that at, uh, at somebody's grandmother's house. You just don't do that. But she had a little, a little pistol and she was waiting for somebody to come up in there. So, All right, man, I'm about to get up out of here, man. This is a Dixon way all about the A uh, sports talk. Appreciate y'all rocking with me. If y'all like this content, you know I'm saying do like this little thing. Say hit that like button, subscribe, ding ding. Get all our latest videos. My son is just coming up. He wants the phone so he can watch some stuff. All right, son, calm down. I'm about to end it right now.
All right, y'all. I will see y'all at 7.30 tonight. Okay? I will see y'all 7.30 tonight, man. For the Hawks versus the Bulls watch party. I hope y'all join me back then. Get some of this good commentary. You know what I'm saying? Good entertainment. Appreciate all y'all on all platforms checking us out. About to be up out here. Peace up, A-Town down. Deuces. And appreciate you guys. Let's get this outro going.